Great. So let's uh, let's get started. So um, first, please make sure you add yourself to the to the agenda in the meeting notes. If you're not able to add yourself, then speak up and we'll add you on your behalf. Also, is there anything that anyone would like to discuss that is not on the um, that is not on the meeting notes? Ramki, I added a topic on uh, making progress on first responder use case um, input coming from the use case discussions. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Ramki. You actually did this exactly the right way, um, which is what I had added something to the agenda. I would encourage other folks to do so as well. Okay, so we have. So we so we have uh, recurring for events. We have uh, uh, a few recurring calls. We have this one. We have uh, the NSM doc use case, which occurs every we which occurs every Wednesday at uh, eight a.m. Pacific time. And we have the NSM use case, which occurs every second, fourth, and fifth Monday at eight a.m. Pacific time as well. We are also participating in the CNCF Telecom User Group. Uh, which occurs every first and third Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. The birds of a feather for next week has been canceled due to the fact that most people, most of the people who are driving the, the this particular group will be at KubeCon, and uh, there is going to be a talk on this that is going to be presented by, I believe. Uh, Dan and uh, Dan Cohn and uh, and Taylor is, is is that right, Taylor? Um, yes, I'm I'm also sharing the screen there, the, the link to the talk. So, uh, yes, sorry, I was muted. Um, yes, this is a, and that pro title probably needs to just be updated from BOF to tag. So the intro for the uh, Telco user group will be happening in there, um, as well as the CNF testbed is going to be related, but it's not. It's one initiative related to the uh, tug. Um, I'm not sure what all is going to be going uh, on on that. It's still getting updated um, with Cheryl and Dan. I'll be mainly focused on the test bed myself. So we also have a um, CNCF working uh, networking working group uh, that is ran by the CNCF that occurs every two weeks on Tuesday. And uh, that occurs at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We have next week coming up, we have KubeCon. Uh, and the KubeCon itself is from May 21st through 23rd. We also have a few co-located events. Those co-located co events are Vital Mini Summit, Cloud Native Network Service Day, and we have talks in both of them as well. In the main session, in the main KubeCon session, we have an intro and deep dive in, in the maintainer track. So, uh, and, if you uh, so, if you'd like to learn more, if you're if you want to if you want to join in and help uh, describe what network service meshes to others, uh, feel free to feel free to join in. If you will be in in Barcelona, uh, we also have KubeCon China coming up at the end of June in Shanghai. We have an intro talk that will be given by me and Nikolai. We have ONS Europe coming up which is the call for paper closes on June 16th. So if you would like to give a talk there and if you, if you would like some help putting something together, uh, come, come reach out to any of us who are, um, to any of the committers and we, we will help you set up your, your talk. We have MEF 2019, 
we have uh, and KubeCon uh, in November. Both, un both of them, unfortunately, located at the same time in different cities, but one of them is in Los Angeles and KubeCon is in uh, San Diego. The call for papers for KubeCon is currently open. So if, again, same thing as ONS, if you'd like to give a talk there, you know, definitely speak up. Um, we, we will definitely be submitting uh, a few network service mesh talks there as well. If you have an event that is not listed, uh, definitely speak up and also open a pull request. There is a link to the site. And um, so onto the social media community team. Uh, Lucina, you have the, uh, the floor. Thank you. Sure, in the last week, uh, we gained 13 followers. We're up to 185 people following and service mesh on Twitter. We've followed 200 more, so we're over 1,000 following accounts. And uh, we have 21 tweets, that's four over last week and retweeted about 10 things. And I scheduled five tweets in Hootsuite to go out um, kind of one a day to promote the intro to Network Service Mesh, the deep dive, as well as the talks during the FTIO mini summit and the LFN session. Uh, if there's anything that, anything else you'd like me to schedule for, um, I'll be happy to do that today and then I may set the account on autopilot until KubeCon. I'm also presenting two talks at KubeCon next Tuesday and Wednesday to prepare for. Cool. Um, <clears throat> autopilot sounds great. I'm delighted that you have a scheduling tool going. That's awesome. I feel a little silly that I didn't realize that was a thing. Um, the other thing I, 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 I do suggest is if you have some other network service mesh related thing, for example, I know we have people looking to do talks and, and demos and booths, et cetera. Um, two things that I would strongly suggest you do. One is update the events page on the website and the other would be let Lucina know uh, so that she can schedule things. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Lucina, adding at your leisure something to the Hootsuite for scheduled tweeting is not hard. Asking you to actually pay attention and live tweet things is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so which um, also brings us to the uh, frequently asked questions page. So uh, that's something that I'm going to get started with uh, today, and I'll shop it around on the NSM uh, in the NSM Dev uh, uh, Slack channel so that people can. Uh, add or change their their views on things. So that way that that way we have something ready for for KubeCon. We have uh, so Prem and I have been working on a on getting a meetup set up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Prem, do you want to uh, talk about it? Sure. Um, so thanks, Fred. Um, so uh, the idea of the meetup is essentially to um, start with a network service mesh and then go on to have uh, related uh, talks, for example, NSM with Envoy and uh, aspects like that. Um, so uh, in a way, uh, uh, Frederick, I was able to secure the funding at least for the uh, Bay Area. I'll connect with uh, the team and then uh, we can probably start the first one. Um, also, uh, just calling out in case of uh, uh, anyone else interested, please uh, uh, let us know. Please, Frederick, you know, or, uh, reach out to me, and then uh, we can definitely look on how, if you want to host it or if you want to partner in doing the meetup, uh, that would be good. Yeah, mm, so that's the update. And um, as a next step, uh, um, I'm working with uh, the uh, uh, with our company to get funding for the meetup.org. It comes with a charge. Uh, we'll probably, uh, uh, Frederick, um, we can probably create the uh, meetup page in meetup.org and then uh, probably then we can probably tweet about it and then publicize uh, the event once we decide on the agenda nice and um also i had a talk with uh, dan cone yesterday and mm -hmm. he um he so he also said that if we want to do anything in san francisco city that uh, the linux foundation has a space that can be used for events 
Awesome. So, uh, so I told him that we will take him up on that as well, but that the, the first one on this is going to be, is, is likely going to be held at, uh, at Lumina. Right. Uh, as long as nothing, uh, as long as nothing goes uh, sure. uh, sideways on that. So, yeah. Uh, so that's some, that's another thing that we that's another resource that we have that we can uh, that we can make use of. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, okay. So, talking as about next steps. That's the next steps. I think uh, we will get that uh, going in the meetup dot org, and then we can uh, share it with the rest of the team. Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds good, and then. Once we run the first one and we gain a, si a sense of the size of the community, we can right. uh, we can start to look at like what is the cadence that we want to to run because uh, one of the tricks to attracting a lot of people is to have very predictable set of meetups with high quality content, mm -hmm. and um, so if you're uh, so if you're predictable, people know to block off their calendars at a specific time and it just becomes part of their ritual. Right. So, all right. So we well, have. Thanks. My pleasure. So we we have uh, since we have KubeCon next week, uh, we the question is: Do we cancel next week's call at uh, KubeCon? Uh, and I also wanted to take the opportunity, since I think we have the leads for the other community weekly community calls here, to give them the opportunity to consider whether they want to cancel their calls or not. It's up to them. Um, but yeah, definitely this one we need to decide. So to help with this, the the, Q, the um, 8 a.m. meeting in uh, Pacific time it will be 5 p.m. in Barcelona. Just for just for reference, uh, I I'm super unlikely to be able to make this meeting next week during the KubeCon. There's just entirely too much stuff going on all the time. Um, I don't know how other people feel in, uh, in terms of the folks here and, and who's attending KubeCon and who's not. Yeah, I feel the I feel the same way. And historically, at previous events, uh, I've also had trouble with connectivity there. Yeah, that's also a thing. I know that ninety percent of the people who regularly attend the Docs call is going to be in KubeCon, so I'm just going to go ahead and call that one. So next Wednesday, um, we're going to postpone Docs for sure. Cool. All right. So, <clears throat> should we go ahead then and say we're you know we've already got you know the call on docs is called for next week. Um, should we say we're going to cancel and put prominently on the meeting uh, site that we're canceling next week for this call as well? I think that we should for this specific uh, call, and the last one is going to be the uh, the use case call, uh, and that's uh, Rumkey's Rumkey's and Prim's decision. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, the use cases after uh, that would be on twenty seventh, right? We're probably ah, you're right. Good, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I apologize. I I got the date wrong. No, it's a it's a little confusing. Even I'm uh, wrapping my head around this uh, scheduling. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll say Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, calls are let's let's prominently put canceled on them for this week and then we'll list next week. And, um, and with that, we'll, we'll catch up next week and see what's going on. So we have uh, some preliminary release notes. Uh, so if someone can open it up. So we ran this through the uh, docs call as well. Uh, so this is th this is the initial set of release notes that we're that we're looking at. Uh, so right up front, the first thing that we want to do is make it easy for people to work out how to get started. So uh, this is where we describe how do you how do you install it how or how, how do you link or material that describes you how, how, how to how to install it. We want to uh, to make it very easy to find out where it is and link them to to working demos. And so once we've done that and then we describe 
we jump straight into what is uh, what is network service mesh. So um, I took a departure from from the norm. Not that we have norms yet on on our own releases, but uh, very it's very common if you look at like Kubernetes and and various other communities that what they'll do is they'll just list all the pull requests saying here's what's changed. Um, the problem is that if we do that, we'll probably list around 900 commits from day one to today. And so rather than do that, I just, I opted for, uh, I, I opted for, so 800 commits. It'll be, it'll probably be 900 by the time we get to it. Uh, but I, I, I opted for describing what uh, network service mesh is and what the major set of components are. And so there's a couple to-do tasks that are uh, that are in there that we need to uh, that we need to fix up. Uh, but basically, describing this is network service mesh. This is the this is the reference architecture that we're uh, that we're releasing, uh, and also make it very clear that the reference architecture is not is not all of NSM. That it's just a small part of NSM, and that the big part is going to come as people continue to build on top of it and integrate their own other things into it. Uh, call out that it's a that is now a CNCF sandbox pro, uh, box project. Um, we now have a logo. When I when we wrote this, we did not have an official logo yet. So we now have a logo that we're going to add in here as well. Um, and finally, a set of known issues. So we will also have known issues and uh, describing the, um, describing that this is an alpha release. Um, don't run it in production um, yet. If, if you if you do run it in production, then tell us everything that breaks. Uh, we go back to how to get involved. So we need to fill in like where to find the meetings, where to find where to find us on Slack, mailing list, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and one last part is we have a document that we've been filling out and is basically a list of, of people who have helped make member service mesh uh, what it is today. And so uh, we're, we're asking people in the community to add yourselves to this. Uh, um, and it, and it doesn't matter what, what how, how small the, the contribution was. I mean, if it's just showing up here and asking questions on a, um, and you know, we, we've had people who have come in here and asked uh, a single question, which has changed the trajectory of, of some of our, of some of our uh, approaches. Heating and air conditioning. Today we're here to talk about the Mitsubishi some... programmable thermostat. This is the main uh, screen James, of the thermostat. Or somebody, I think we're getting the audio background from. The room. On the right. Is that Dennis? Yeah, I think it's Dennis. Dennis, if you can mute yourself. Or if just, I don't know if anyone has the ability to mute him. Cool. All right. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So so it doesn't matter like how how large or small the contributions that you have are, like if, if you've helped with use cases or you've helped with uh, with documents or, or so on. Like add add yourself to this list because uh, that really drives network service mesh. You know, it's 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 not just a, a small handful of us at the at the top that uh, that makes all of this happen. Like it really is a, a community effort, and there's so much the community has done to, in order to to get us here. And so we want to we want to try, we want to try to call out as many people as uh, as we can as as having helped in this space. So. The link is in the uh, the URL, and if you know of people who have helped that are not here, um, like definitely definitely add them in as well. Do we have any um, questions or, or comments on the on the release notes? Yeah, I, I think that something else we're going to put in known issues is there are a bunch of known issues about limitations in the kernel, uh, some of which we've bounced into. So for example, the Linux kernel appears to have a global limit of 128 MAC addresses, 
um, in its own table. And so if you're doing something where you're programming neighbors as part of your connection context, I can't make, I mean, you could go tweak your system to increase that limit, but I can't make a default Linux system actually scale. It's just, it's not a thing it does. Right. So you can't download the, the kernel, patch it, reinstall it, reboot the system for a user? Well, the good, the, you could tweak a parameter and reboot the system, right? <laughs> that, that's a doable thing. Um, not fair enough. But yeah. Yeah, so that, 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 that's a good call out. Uh, we will have the same problem as well, not only with, uh, with ARP requests, but um, uh, systems with how many uh, interfaces you can have on a, on a single system as well, which is part of the reason whether we really need to bring in, well, which is not really we bring in, we've already brought them in, but to, uh, to encourage the use of things, of things like shared memory. Yeah, I mean, and please know this is just kernel interfaces. MemIFs, you know, the limit is how much memory you have on the system. Um, the kernel interfaces, I think the limit is 1,024 in total. Um, you know, and that shouldn't be bad for most nodes at this stage, but that, that, that limitation is gonna become all kinds of intractable as, as servers go up and not just for network service mesh, for frankly, everybody. Yeah, and this might actually, uh, given enough time, this might actually be one of the uh, one of one really good reason that uh, people in the kernel community may actually, you know, we we, we may be able to convince them to uh, up that number if uh, if it's not too difficult of a, of a process, but um, or, or make it more flexible. Um, it, it's kind of weird that it is pegged at something that inflexible. I mean, I, I particularly the ARP table one blows my mind. I mean, I've 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 seen, as you might imagine, a lot of ARP table implementations in my in my day. I've never seen one pegged that, that way. Well, so how do you want to list these type of uh, these type of limitations? Uh, like, where do we where do we want to store them? I think we'll just put them in known issues because they they are just known issues. They're in some sense they're kernel bugs. Um, and I don't think they're going to bite most people at this point. Most people are going to be using us for L3, so they won't use the IP neighbors stuff, so they won't hit that limit on our table size. Um, right now, most nodes are topping out at 100 pods per node. So 1,024 interfaces um, is going to be much less of a big deal for them. Um, but you know, as people sort of start growing up server sizes, um, it's going to be more interesting. Okay. So we'll add that to uh, genome issues then. Uh, it's added as a as a to do as well for that specific one because that's going to be important. Okay, so we have uh, CI stabilization. Um, Ed, you have the floor. Yeah, so I just wanted to to recognize those of you who have been doing development work the last week or so probably noticed that we've had a lot of of trouble with our CI. Um, and it, it seems to have, have we sort of, you know, Andre and, and a bunch of those guys have sort of rooted down this to a, a small number of, of root causes. One of them was that as we've added new things like AWS, we haven't always figured out the, uh, figured out the right set of limits on quotas for things. And I think those are mostly fixed now. So we would hit a place where we couldn't create the clusters in order to do testing because we were hitting limits on quotas on, on various cloud providers. The second thing that's happened is um, we weren't cleaning up. We were actually leaking clusters, which is kind of a dramatic thing to leak. And again, then you hit the wall eventually with the cloud providers. And I think that's been fixed. Um, a third thing that happened was apparently some of the dependencies between jobs weren't quite set right. So that, you know, we would have integration tests that would try to run before images were actually built properly and that they would naturally fail. Um, and then I think the last thing that we got cleared up was we had some places where um, there was some silent swallowing of, of clusters not being properly created, which looked like test failure because the test went to run and there was no cluster to run on, but it's actually cluster creation failure. Um, so hopefully that will get enormously better at this point, but I, I did want to sort of acknowledge that that's been a problem and, and what it really comes down to is um, just standing up stuff like this in the cloud to run reliable CI 
there, there have been some learning um, opportunities there. <clears throat> I like the learning opportunities part. <laughs> and, uh, it's all about tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I personally have found like, if you if if you want to work out how a system works, uh, how do you uh, like how does this how do you start up a, a project? How do you how do you run a server? What parameters are necessary, and and so on. So if you if you're looking to actually gain that experience. Uh, the like ci is by definition that like it's you're you're spinning up a system you're building a system you're spinning it up you're seeing you're seeing how it works and verifying that it works and so so you have all of the code there that uh, that describes how uh, how these mechanisms work so it's uh, it's actually a really good way to to get involved with um with the with the project so if, if someone wants to, if someone's been looking for a, for an entry point into network service mesh and has had a little bit of difficulty, and you have some previous uh, and you have some previous systems experience, uh, by all means dive in. You know, and we'll and we'll we'll help you. Are there any uh, action items that we want to call out on on this, Ed? No, it's just one of those things where. Uh, I noticed it wasn't on the agenda, and I, I know that if I if I wasn't as involved in sort of getting to the small number of root issues, I would be super concerned with what I'd seen in the CI in the last week. And so I did want to make sure that we we brought it out front and center. We talked about it. We talked about what was going on, and the fact that we think we've actually shaken this out at this point. Uh, it'll probably take a day or two to actually be sure. Cool. And I think that that we should uh, we should say it uh, clearly that. We have three public clouds plus packet, which is again kind of public cloud deployment in in our CI and uh, synchronizing between these uh, and uh, making sure that all these work the, the way that we expect them to work. At the same time, it's I mean it just takes some learning opportunities <laughs> before before you do yeah before I mean do it. Yeah, I mean, so. our CI is actually incredibly ambitious. Um, we run patch by patch validation um, for, on a very large number of integration tests across the three major public clouds in North America, plus vanilla Kubernetes on bare metal every single time. Um, and so it's, it's a very ambitious CI. And, and the fact that, you know, we're actually doing it is, is quite awesome. Yeah, and uh, in terms of... Uh in terms of best practices in the application world. So uh, they, there's, this, um, there's this push towards uh, what they call continuous, uh, continuous deployment and continuous delivery. So this one is not continuous deployment, but it is continuous. Uh, it is pushing towards continuous delivery, toward, towards that direction. And uh, it's just exactly as you described. Any any commit you go through runs through a large battery of tests. Things are fully automated. If something breaks, you fix the automation. You fix the you fix the bug, and you don't and you don't wait until like a nightly test or a weekly test to work out that things are broken because by then you have no idea what broke things. Yep. So. Uh, Nikolai, you want to talk about the uh, Andromeda release? Um, yeah. So um, I did, and I believe a couple of other people also did some grooming around the backlog here and what's in progress. We also merged some things. Uh, and uh, think that we are, I mean, okay, today we were supposed to do the the release but uh, yeah still we have some issues but still I think that we are in in a good in a good shape uh, relative to where we are I mean what um, uh, what's what is the status of, um, of of the backlog what was it like three three weeks ago so I think that we have pushed a lot here so what we spoke last week was that uh, we are going to consider um, creating the release branch at some time around today so that we can 
um, we can have a stable set of demos there for the KubeCon. Um, so um, uh, I I am fine with that. I mean, I think that that we are we are at the stage where we can we can do that. I mean, uh, as, at least regarding the demos, I don't think that we have any issues there, and they should be they should be completely fine. I mean, if if we, if we branch today. That's one thing. Uh, on the other, on the other hand, we also there is this push around consolidating the images that we use in our CI, and I am also um, I don't know how how many of you remember, but there is a, an, another uh, repo code examples where I am also pushing some things there, and I'm also working on. Um, moving or at least replicating the same examples that we have in the main repo there. So um, my question here would be, do we think that the examples could be this um, source of uh, truth where we actually do the, uh, the demos from or we should just keep the idea with the branch and continue with it? Yeah, I, the other one I would want to throw out there is um, I'd kind of like to see CI stable for a couple of days before we pull the branch. Okay. I, mean, I really want to see the branch pulled, not only for the demos at KubeCon, but also because that frees up master again, um, you know, for development. And there's just a lot of good reasons I want to see the branch pulled. But I, I kind of like to see the CI relatively stable, at least on, you know, as it's coming across on master for a day or two before then, just to make sure that we are actually stamped out the CI problems and we're not gonna have to try and double commit those CI fixes. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, makes sense, of course. Um, okay, so uh, then, um, then let's just quickly quickly go through the through the in progress things here. So we have a couple of things around IPv6, which seem to be blocked more or less um, on some some problems that we found uh, with uh, bringing in uh, to the the latest uh, VPP release uh, two point one. So I'm not sure if. Um, um, if this should be a showstopper for us, I mean, like, uh, should we consider IPv6 for, for the release or should we not? Um, I think that for the time being we can, but maybe we'll sit that down the road. Uh, other than that, I don't see anything that is really particularly outstanding. Probably mostly things around the CI, and I would agree with you right here that maybe yeah. maybe maybe this, this should be our... Um, our main point here, I mean, just make CI stable and then branch and yeah. And call it. Quite frankly, what I would really love to see is I still would like to see us push to get IPv6 working if we can. Um, <clears throat> we have a little bit of time before we pull the branch because we're going to get CI stable. Oh. So we can keep pushing on v6 and, and see if that comes together. If it comes together, it comes together. But you know. <clears throat> Having v6 working, I think, would be really, really a good idea if we can get it there. So uh, IPv6 payloads, it really depends on the just fixing or at least figuring out what's what's going on, why test starts is failing when 2.1 gets in. Uh, but for the cluster, I think that that it will be. I mean, uh, our our CI and everything is so complicated already, and I I think IPv6 on top of it before we consider a substantial or uh, refactor. Or at least some kind of more consolidating this whole big YAML file that we do. I know that uh, Andre had some ideas around changing the CI, yeah. but I mean, it's actually, it's actually one of the reasons that I th I'd be really happy when we get the branch pulled, because the kinds of things that that Andre is wanting to do, I think, are, are super good and important in terms of simplifying the CI. But I'm not sure they're the things to do late stage on a. Really yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, now, yeah. I think your point is that we're, we're too far along to add the IPv6 cluster now. Mm -hmm. My tend would be to say, if that turns out to be the case, then uh, getting the branch pulled earlier is also good because that work can push forward on the um, on master. <clears throat> and, and what was the issue that we needed to go to version 2.1 of the VPP agent for the payloads? 
the issue is uh, that uh, tests are failing with uh, 2.1. No, no, but why are, why are we having to go to v2.1 uh, is my question for v6 payloads. Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, we needed to um, to enable, there was a, a syscatl uh, to uh, enable IPv6 in the con containers, which needs to be done. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, <clears throat> I get this. Um, for, for those of you who have not been following closely, it, it turns out that the network namespaces, if you're a v4 cluster, they are set up to not allow you to have v6 addresses in them by default. And so there was a fix that needed to make that not so, so that you could have v6 interfaces for payload dropped into pods in a v4 bit only pod. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. <clears throat> so that's the thing we can sort of figure out. The, the question I would have on the, the v2.1 patches, are we seeing, are the, has that been rebased on the fixes that we've done for the CI so far, and, or could it be? Because there's a lot of weird shit uh, that got fixed. Yeah, okay, so the last push was a couple of, well. Seven hours ago? Yeah. yeah. It might be worth in, encouraging him to uh, basically to, to re-update for master, because I think there are some things that have been fixed recently and try again. Um, <clears throat> so so, uh, sorry, guys. Nikolai, uh, probably with IPv6, we could check uh, Google Cloud, since uh, as I've seen, it has both IPv4 and IPv6 IP addresses for pods. Yeah, yeah, that's not, not the problem. I mean, uh, Packet also has both addresses, so that's not okay. uh, really the issue. It's, um, I mean, regarding the clusters, I think is that you essentially you will need we will need to have a separate deployment for for a Kubernetes cluster, uh, additional to whatever we have now. So, okay. I mean, ideally we we should just deploy Kubernetes again with IPv6 enabled, and then run the tests again, and this will just explode <laughs> all the all the CI yeah. tests yeah. that we have already. I mean, it will be. <laughs> Yes, yeah. also uh, at the moment I'm trying with Azure pipelines, so it could be a bit better in comparison mm -hmm. to CircleCI. Yeah. So we'll figure out. Yeah, <clears throat> so part, here's what I think I'm hearing, right? Which is the, the, the IPv6 case cluster um, stuff. In other words, running out of seven on IPv6 case cluster, that may bump out to the next release because of the timing. Um, the testing NSM with IPv6 payloads, <coughs> um, Let's go ahead and see if we can get the um, get that patch updated to what's currently you know on top of what's currently on master. The test, that I, the test fails that I'm seeing there are look like some that we solved with some of the fixes that went in in the last few hours that were really cause infrastructure issues. So let's go ahead and see if we can get him to, to update this to the latest um, on master, and then let's rerun the CI again and see where it stands. Sound good? <coughs> yeah. Now. Real quick, for our IPv6 proponents on the call, and you've already made yourself known in the chat, um, <clears throat> is, you know, my question is, is, the testing, is getting, making sure we have IPv6 payloads working on um, NSM, you know, basically, if you had to pick between that and having it working on an IPv6 cluster, which one do you care more about? Can you ask that one more time, Ed? I was, you were breaking up in my headset. That's okay. So we have two things on IPv6, and, and, and I, I would like to get both of them, but priorities are always a thing. And so the, I find it most productive to ask people to priority or rank things. So for the V6 proponents, which do you care more about? Having V6 payloads running across the network service mesh or having the network service mesh running on a Kubernetes IPv6 only cluster? Me, IPv6 only cluster. Interesting. Okay, that is not what I would have predicted. <clears throat> Jeffrey, do you have anything? <clears throat> this one's tough. So once again, the service provider, redheaded stepchild. Um, I have like, it's like dictated. Like anything I do must have IPv6 support. So I need both. If I had to prioritize, I would probably pick payloads because for the cluster itself, I can cheat and put an IPv6 VIP in front of the services, and then um, just do IPv4 local. And I mean, long-term though, I want both, but I would probably start with payloads personally. 
Okay. So just a little bit of uh, information of uh, changes in Kubernetes coming up. There is in the near future, they're aiming for, um, for a summer release. They are, they are going to have dual stack IPv4 and IPv6 working. So we, we may be able to uh, uh, make use of that in this, uh, in this scenario as well. So Christmas is coming this summer. Got it. Uh, <laughs> actually, exactly. <clears throat> that's a very, uh, I would say it's a very optimistic um, assessment because even the design, the uh, Kubernetes enhancement hasn't been merged for dual stack support. So I won't see it. I, I, w I think it will not hit a uh, quote probably next two releases at very best. Yeah, my, my opinion is um, it's... Um, it's not there until it's there. Uh, and so until it's been properly merged, like don't rely on that information. But uh, in the near future, there is a possibility that, uh, that some of this may, uh, may, may be resolved. But so, uh, uh, we, we should not rely on it. To add to your question about the, the workloads or the, the, the cluster. So for me, my use case is I don't really care if my cluster is on a v4 many, like control plane, what's important to me is that the switching layer, for example, VPP, and the, the workloads can do v6 as well. Okay, so, so, so the, it's more the workloads than the, the, the community that, itself. That, that, would, that would seem to be the payloads then, right? So if you've got a network service yeah. map to give you a connection, they can carry v6. So that, that's yeah. what I expected, actually, um, honestly. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, that, that, that's good to know that I misunderstood your, your initial statement. Um, so that, that's good. And, and, and this is like anything else, by the way. Um, all of us who've been around the block with IPv6, we know two things. We know that the way that network service mesh has been architected, it should work perfectly fine with IPv6 with no problems whatsoever. We also know, because we've already found a problem with the payloads, um, that will be false until we actually test it and find the, the, the little nits. <clears throat> so. Okay, that's good. So it sounds like we're leaning towards payloads being the more important one then? Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Daniel. Okay, that's actually good because I think payloads is potentially quite a bit more addressable. If we get lucky, then <clears throat> the fixes to the CI that went in late this morning um, should resolve all or most of the issues with the VPP agent 2.1. And so we, we, we have the potential <clears throat> to have this converge fairly quickly on the V6 payloads. To be fair, though, I want you to fix all my problems, Ed. So just jump on. I, that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's been your expectation all along. Okay, so then it's clear, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, the conclusion is we're going to go for IPv6 payloads, mostly for the time being, and uh, we are going to wait a couple of days to, for the CI to stabilize, like wait, mean active waiting, <laughs> uh, actively trying to make it more stable, and then we branch before we go to KubeCon, and we have the demos there, from there. Uh, that this should conclude the current status of the release. Uh, we have, I think like 10 minutes. So, um, Ed, do you want to quickly bring up the topic of the stickers and then we give the floor to Ramki to do his? Yeah, if, if Ramki is cool with that, the stickers are not really so much a topic, it's just a victory lap. Um, oh, okay. So, presuming that they get delivered. Um, it's stickers versus me, just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Obviously, the stickers will win. So, I know that. I know who's going to win. But no, no offense, but they're prettier than both of us put together. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, presuming that the stickers that I ordered are delivered properly to me literally the day before I get on a plane to KubeCon, uh, we will have 500 of each of these stickers available um, <clears throat> to spread around. You know, we've got two stickers that we did. One is the very sensible, um, you know, circular logo with Network Service Mesh I.O. on it. Um, the other one was... In, Everyone knows I've got a problem with QR codes. And so the, the second one is my problem with QR codes manifesting itself. So, um, the, so the second one is uh, the sneaky booth uh, one. You can go and stick them on people's booths. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, 
I mean, the, the second one actually, if you scan the QR code, it will actually take you to our website. And it takes you to our website in a way that can be tracked by Google Analytics so we can see what the response is on the sticker. So, um, but like I said, we'll have about 500 of each. So if you find me at KubeCon, I'm happy to give them to people to hand out themselves. I'm happy to give people to hand out of their talks. I'm happy to give them to people to hand out of their booths. I'm just happy. <laughs> I was trying to play around with the AR VR tool just to see if we can, if someone scans, it can essentially show the miscreated. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So we should, we should probably let Ronki get to use cases. Yeah. Ronki, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so uh, you can actually just project the, open the use case document. I can, oh yeah, awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, perfect. So, um, so we've been um, having very good discussions uh, as part of the use case call and narrowing down to a specific uh, near-term use case which we can work on. Um, so far, the first responder use case came out as something uh, which is uh, essentially top-notch and of high interest and an area where NSM can show concrete value. Um, and what we also did was rather than just uh, drawing out a top level use case, we broke it down to sub use cases or functions. Correct. So, we have to so thank basically, Jeffrey for that. Yeah, thanks, Jeffrey, for bringing in that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeff and uh, uh, yeah, Daniel, you know, um, you know, Daniel. matches so many, I mean, all the operators for the um, discussions. Um, and um, so basically, as part of it, we said uh, the first sub-use case or function would be the mobile client side, right? The next uh, sub-use case would be sort of uh, what happens in the uh, mobile and per packet core, right? So basically, third second. And, um, and also, the third one was uh, mobile network uh, RAN, right? So basically, these are the use cases, the sub-use cases we broke it down to. Um, and in that, what we did an analysis was sort of, um, hey, um, how can we make concrete progress on these sub-use cases or functions? Uh, what we realized was there is a fantastic uh, uh, open EPC implementation available. Uh, so this is basically from Sprint and Intel. Uh, they are the primary uh, contributors. It's called OMEC. Uh, it's a full-blown EPC implementation. Every component exists and notably, uh, what is of interest would be a cloud native control plane and data plane. Um, even that is fully disaggregated. Right now, this implementation is 4G, and then they're moving to uh, 5G uh, very quickly. And specifically in the 4G, what is very nice is they have a 4G S gateway, P gateway, control plane and data plane are fully, fully cloud native. Um, high performance with PPDK, SRAOV, all the options are available. Uh, right, and you can even um, separate out the S gateway and P gateway if you desire it, or you can package them together. Right, um, and so basically the idea was so far we've been looking at hey, uh, what are some real VNFs to onboard to NSM, and this seems to be one spot on right where we can jump in, and the, and it has got uh, multiple network interfaces. For example, specifically in uh, the S gateway, P gateway data plane. Uh, besides the K8S interface, uh, there is one interface towards RAN, which will process GTP uh, U packets. And there is another interface uh, towards the uh, internet or SGI interface that will uh, uh, you know, emit out uh, IPsec tunnels um, or just uh, standard VLANs or whatever you choose, right? Um, so um, now, uh, with this view, what we're seeing is uh, it's probably worth, uh, you know, for the team and for the community to work together on this, uh, you know, on driving this specific sub-use case. Um, and here the goal is, hey, uh, this project is coming from Intel, so the questions were asked, right? Uh, you know, Intel is a heavy proponent of Maltus. So here, our message is very clear. We're going to complement Maltus in, you know, in automating the network network service. As you clearly see, uh, Maltus has is a good specification, but doesn't drive automation. So basically, uh, you know, everything, even the IP addresses, are all manual, right? So and then, uh, 
it basically gets into a plugin specific network plugin specific exercise so uh, where nsm can really help us essentially uh, you know in network automation in the case of uh, hardware and software with different capabilities for example the hardware may have srivv or smart nic or maybe may not have any high performance uh, you know uh, attributes right so how do we uh, automate it seamlessly and uh, uh, keep things simple from scnf perspective right uh, that's what that's where nsm value comes in and regarding making uh, even more specific progress our thoughts were hey uh, why not um, work very closely with the telco working group right um, we have tailor here so basically hey um, they have always been looking for good bnfs and this is something which we can help drive uh, closely working with them um, and in terms of uh, not just working together but also utilizing the setup right common setup and then uh, making rapid progress which could also lead to sort of you know the next step around how we can uh, deploy this on the packet infrastructure right taking it to the further next level uh, where there again there seems to be um, bigger interest in tying to other sub use cases such as uh, you know cbrs right uh, basically uh, from the folks from cbrs alliance who are trying to get in touch with like joel lindhorn uh, who is a key person there and um, that could also sort of help us uh, advance uh, uh, you know uh, this use case and sub use cases in sm and packet right um, at least this was the thought process which uh, came out of uh, you know several um, uh, use case meetings and uh, really thanks to the use case stream for you know helping get here to a level of concrete detail which we have here and of course uh, prem has been besides me a key proponent of this use case so I'd like to thank him well the team might be thanks from here i think awesome team yeah i think one other uh, ask here is probably uh, we were discussing yesterday is uh, we would know more details when rubber hits the road um, so at least if we can uh, start implementing uh, some of the parts of it and then also one other ask here is uh, if uh, uh, we have any cnf vendor uh, who can uh, probably uh, provide or try to uh, have uh, an implementation based on nsm that would essentially help out um because one thing what we are looking at is uh, take open epc and then uh, uh, as uh, ramki was mentioning uh, try to get into the nsm and then develop the uh, use develop the business logic as well as a client needed for the first responder so that's the activity uh, that we are looking at and uh, i think implementation is going to be the key uh, even a simple pack would essentially uh, provide us uh, a lot of um, or give us a lot of confidence uh, in showing the world on how nsm looks from the uh, real use case perspective and also uh, one closing thought here um, nikolai brought up a very good point on you know the road map right there several items use cases ci uh, so we do think uh, this can be a concrete driver for several other activities we start off with a concrete use case and a specific sub use case that's on it and then uh, then that could be the driver for uh, other specific tasks around ci or integration and what we are trying to do Okay, we are at the top of the hour. Um, we think that we should wrap up, kind of, Fred. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, well, the I guess the last part is um, uh, before we finish up. Um, uh, Ed, do, do we have any intention on doing some form of an NSM happy hour? <clears throat> I think we should. I think we should do. some form of an NSM get together. One of the things I want to check with today is <clears throat> typically speaking on at KubeCon events, they have an area with tables and whiteboards and things on the conference floor. The evening event schedule is going to be insanely packed. So doing a happy hour I think is likely to be um problematic. 
But what I'd like to do is figure out a place and a time where we could all get together around whiteboards and as a community sort of brainstorm some of the, the things going forward. Because there's a lot of cool things going forward that we can and should do as a community that I would love to talk through with everybody. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. And so we'll, I think we can do two things. So number one, for the people who are here, um, hop on to the NSM Slack channel because your Slack should still work in, um, in Barcelona. The second thing is uh, we'll also announce uh, times and dates for any of these type of events that we're coming up both on Slack and both on, on Slack and on. Um, with that, uh, I don't think we have anything else. And uh, Prem, add that to the next, uh, to the next session. Uh, sure. Uh, unless it's time sensitive and get a hold of us uh, off uh, asynchronous. With that, uh, I want to thank everyone for your time. Have a great, um, have a great day and uh, be safe on your trip over if you're coming to Barcelona and we will see you either next week or the week after. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Gone. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. See Bye. at least half of you yeah. in a week. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.